while perusing the many exhibits and attractions at AOPA 2007, it was brought up to us that, uh, at least from some of our people here at Aero News or at Aero TV, that, hey, those past folks, they want to talk to you. Well, these are the past folks. Let's talk to them. Let's find out what's going on. Let's find out what they have to say. Here among the, uh, the cream of the crop in the general aviation community in Hartford, Connecticut, what do we, the general aviation and the rest of the aviation community, not know about PASS? What do we need to know as a result? Basically, PASS represents uh, FAA employees. We're the technicians uh, that maintain, certify, and repair navigational aids, communications, automation, surveillance, uh, used at general aviation airports today across the country. You obviously had something that we needed to know. There are things that are of great concern to you, and we're at a time right now where between the FAA and the way the FAA and the rest of the community is trying to deal with each other and not necessarily in the friendliest of terms, you folks are stuck in the middle of a number of issues. What, some, what might some of those issues be? Well, I think our major issue today is um, is the fact that the FAA has shut the door on us. Uh, it used to be several years ago where it used we used to have a... Uh, a, a, a level of involvement that we do not enjoy today. Um, they used to want to hear from the technical specialists um, about their programs. We used to sit on their committees and, and help them with their analysis and surveys. Today they don't, they don't want to have anything to do with uh, either unions, either uh, professional airway system specialists or NACA for that matter. Um, and in that, in that fact, we have no say in any of the decisions they're making today. Um, and one thing in particular that they're doing today is uh, promoting their reliability-centered maintenance or event-based certification, which is a fix-on-fail approach. And this would affect mostly general aviation airports. Um, over, the last, over the course of the last year or two, they have been continuing to uh, delay restoration at general aviation airports, including pulling funding for restoration of certain facilities. So they're allowed to operate until they deteriorate to a point where they can no longer be repaired. Um, just three weeks ago, PASS actually did testify to Congress about the current uh, situation on the NAS infrastructure. Um, we produced pictures uh, from across the nation of ILS buildings with holes in the floor, mold growing on the walls. Um, we have plastic over equipment protecting it from the rainfall because of roof leaks. Um, all these situations the FAA has been aware of um, at these general aviation airports for a number of years, but yet they are not uh, putting the funding towards fixing these legacy systems. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Mark, there are those on the outside will say that what you're trying to do is protect your jobs and protect your turf. But at the same time, I see a tremendous amount of passion in the communications that we get from your members at Aero News. It's not, these are the items that concern us, or we fly too, or, you know, my friends who are in general aviation are being threatened by this. Is this a turf war, or is this pride and professionalism on your part? Well, I mean, obviously the correct answer would be pride and professionalism on our part. And I think most of our people do feel that way. In fact, I think we're really the glue that's been holding the whole system together. If you look at the problems, I don't know if, you're, uh, if your membership is aware of the Harris um, FAA Telecommunications Infrastructure, FTI program. They, they want a large contract to basically provide all the telecommunications services that provide the radar and the communications data between remote facilities and our centers where we have air traffic controllers and towers. And uh, that hasn't been going very well either. Um, there was just a recent outage in Memphis that caused 555 delays nationwide. Um, obviously, and the, and the obvious domino effect that occurs thereafter. Oh yeah, yep. I've, I've worked with employees out in uh, Chicago where there were problems there and it caused over 100 delays. Mm -hmm. Of course, anything happens in uh, you know, O'Hare and there's ripple effects all across the country. But there's, you know, it's just one example after another where they're privatizing bits and pieces of the whole NAS infrastructure and our people are being tasked 
to try and hold it all together. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. A lot of passion here, uh, a lot of concern. How does the general aviation community react to this? What can people out there who use this system do to make sure that the system starts responding not only to their needs now, but their needs for the future? It's funny you should mention that because I was just talking to a local gentleman out of, well, local to Pennsylvania, and he's having a continuous service problem out there. And the number one uh, advice that I can give to every pilot out there, whether you're general aviation or commercial, if you see problems with the system, you need to contact your local congressman, you need to contact your senators, tell them your issues, put the pressure on them. You need to be involved and active. It's a phone call, it, it could be an office visit, it can be an email, but you, we really need to get the word out there because the system is, is degrading. I think every pilot out there can see it. Every pilot it has felt it um, and, and it's going further.